In this video, we're gonna fix the surge. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. Napoleon, like anyone can even know that. Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're gonna to be working on this Honda generator. It's an EU 3000 IS. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's an inverter generator with about 3000 output watts. And this thing surges when it runs. Uh, I got this from a buddy of mine. He asked me to take a look at it. It starts up just fine. It runs on choke. Um, if you push the choke in, it dies. And um, you can push about halfway in and the engine is surging. So I'm pretty sure it's just a carburetor issue. Let's start it up so y'all can hear what it sounds like and then we'll get started taking it apart. This thing's been sitting a little bit. The battery is dead. So uh, fortunately it does have a pull start on it. Yeah, no, no nothing going on there with the electric start. So I've never worked on one of these before, but uh, I guess we'll get started. Probably what I will do is take the old sniff test in here. Can you smell that? It smells old. Go ahead and get that gas out of there. And I see that panel opens up. So we'll open that up and see what's under there. That doesn't look too bad to me. Carburetor is right there. Doesn't look amazing to get to, but seen worse air filter looks fine all right well, I think what we'll probably start with is I see a couple of bolts holding this air filter housing on looks like maybe three that I can see Hopefully there's not another one hiding somewhere we'll get them out of the way and then uh, see about access to this uh, carburetor let's see here I guess in there you go. That's the choke mechanism right there. So, yeah, these look like 10 mil, so I'll get them off. I really like this thing has a fuel valve that you can shut off, and you can just run the engine completely out of uh, fuel, which is really going to be your best bet. If you have one of these things, shut that off, run it for the one minute or whatever it takes to uh, completely run the carburetor out of fuel and then you won't have any problems like this but uh continuing on this thing did just have those three bolts it has a hose on the top it goes right into that it's just a vent hose here and then there's a hose in the bottom i pulled it out of there i suppose we pull it off here as well and i love making videos because sometimes i forget the way things go back together so we've got a Kind of a thick metal gasket deal here and now we have the choke which i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do this uh, stand over here well, the stand is going to be able to get you a good view of what's going on here but basically what you need to do is push this spring back with your fingers and then pull the cable through Man, this is easy to do with one hand there you go. I'm kind of getting it, but let's see. Of course. Sorry about the weird angle. One of these days, I'm going to make my fortune on YouTube, and then I'm going to hire someone to be my camera person. There we go. See what I'm saying? That thing pushed out of there. And now hopefully this plate will come off. Or maybe it won't. I see. It won't. But we should be able to start finagling our carburetor out of here a little bit. 
I have to figure out how it's all hooked up back here. I don't understand this whole thing. It looks like an electronic throttle, I'm thinking. And our fuel line is right here. So I'll just disconnect that and I'll start pulling that out. And if I find something crazy, I'll bring you back. So these generators have what's called a uh, electronic speed control eco throttle on this one. And that's probably controlled by this thing right here. Some kind of a servo that operates the throttle linkage. And it looks like we just uh, unplug that right there. So you're just gonna have to pry that tab just a little bit and pop that out. And this choke plate on the back just has a pin goes into the choke linkage there and there was a gasket between the body of the throttle and this choke plate here so make sure you don't forget about that and there's a gasket up there as well I disconnected the fuel line I disconnected these vent lines that are hanging here well most of them there's still one on the bottom of the float bowl there I have to get off so I'll unhook that unplug that and we'll bring this over to the bench These carburetors are pretty simple. The Honda engine runs a really nice carburetor, actually. It's a key in. And um, if you ever worked on the Harbor Freight Predator engines, it's a, like a direct knockoff of these. Like the one that I have in my Predator 3500, it's just a knockoff of this one. But look at that. There's another way you can ensure that you don't have a problem. You open that side cover and open that drain. It'll drain everything right out of the bottom of that float bowl. Okay. We don't look too bad in here. A little bit green. Not terrible. Look at that. We have a plastic um, float needle. That's interesting. And there's a jet inside of there. We'll remove that. And if I remember correctly, we have to take um, this idle screw out so what i'll probably do is i'll turn it in and count how many turns in it goes write that down somewhere so i don't forget take it out and then this little plastic piece underneath here pops up and that's kind of part of your idle circuit on these if i remember right so i'll get all that taken apart i'll show you how that piece comes out when i do it all right so i've got that idle adjust screw out like i said i turned it in until it stopped two and a quarter turns and i took it all the way out that way when we put it back in we'll Turn it all the way in, back it out two and a quarter. It should be set pretty much where it was. Let's get you in frame here. Get the camera a little bit, make it easier on me. Now this little plastic piece here should pop out of here. There we go. And uh, that's kind of your idle circuit in there. So we'll clean that out really well. Clean the rest of the carburetor, spray through all the passages. I've got that main jet out right there. The emulsion tube that sits underneath it. So when you take that out, watch that that comes out and the emulsion tube. If it doesn't come out, sometimes you have to, the little tip of it sticks up inside right in the middle. And sometimes you just push down on that with a screwdriver and it'll come out. So we're gonna clean all these items up really well with the carburetor cleaner and uh, Nothing looks too bad. I mean, obviously it was running. It was running okay, but I think we'll probably have an issue with this idle circuit mainly. This carburetor wasn't really too dirty, but uh, the emulsion tube itself was pretty um, full of stuff. So we got that cleaned out. Now is a good time, if you're interested, to uh, you can go ahead and try to grind off this little tab on this mixture screw here because they have it set and they usually set these things to run pretty lean for emissions purposes and that sort of stuff and you can't adjust this thing you can only turn it let me see if i can do this with one hand here you can only turn it that far half a turn because that little tab on there prevents it from going all the way around so you can grind that off and then you can adjust that thing. And usually a good place to start is turn it in till it lightly seats and then back it out about two turns and then you can adjust it while the engine's running. So I'm gonna try to clean that uh, tab off of there and see what we can do. 
I was putting the old Dremel to the test here, and then the uh, cap to that actually came off, and there's a screw underneath it, which I kind of thought might be the case, but I wasn't sure. So now we all know. So there you go. And it was adjusted about one and a quarter turns out, so I backed it out to two turns out. We're going to throw this thing back in, and uh, I am draining the fuel out right now. So once that fuel is drained out, I'll put some fresh fuel in and see how this thing goes. All right, when assembling this thing, I found that it was easiest to get this uh, pin in here with the carburetor slid all the way back. So it's just barely hanging on here. Put the pin on in the plate and then push the whole thing forward because it was really hard to get that pin located in there. You want to make sure you have that correct so that when you move that arm, the choke valve opens and closes. So I think we're good to go on that. Let me put this uh, gasket on here the correct way. There we go. And this air box and hook everything up. And uh, we'll be ready to give it a shot with some fresh fuel. Everything went together pretty well. The only thing I would recommend if you're doing this is to uh, just remove this hose right here instead of pulling it all the way out because it goes into this. Uh, valve cover here so you gotta work it in there a little bit and I put some fresh fuel in here let's see what happens and uh, I hope you're all rooting for me here um, choke get a uh, heater I've got a little electric heater I'll plug that in to put a load on this thing see how it feels but it's already running a lot better all right it's summertime I don't really need to be running a heater but uh, I'll test the eco throttle As you can see it runs it down a little bit I guess just if you're running things that don't require a whole lot of load like if this thing was running the full 3000 that eco throttle won't work but there you go. This thing is running smooth. That looks like the Boba Ferry's been here. So one last thing here. We're going to see if we can't uh, get this battery to hold a charge. So I pulled this front cover off. Let me show you. Four acorn nuts. One, two, three, four. And that cover comes off. And I just knocked all the, all the little inserts out of there. So don't lose those. And if your acorn nuts don't come loose, chances are that these standoff things are stuck to it. I had three out of the four of them that were trapped between this and the acorn nut. So it just spun them out of here. But I reinstalled them. And I won't tighten those acorn nuts quite as tight. So let's get this thing charged up and see if it holds up. All right, if you have one of these Honda generators and you need a new battery, that's the size right there. YTZ 10S. It's readily available on different sites. Amazon, you can buy a cheapy one for 30 bucks or a fancy one for however much you want to spend. Um, I highly suggest if you have one of these generators that you hook up a uh, charging lead to this and then run it out of the side somewhere. Maybe drill a hole through the cover or something. I'm sure there's a mod somewhere for that. Um, but then you'll be able to keep it charged up when you don't use it. I have the same thing on my Predator generator. The battery goes dead because I don't run it very much, but the pull start works really good. I talked to my buddy who um, I am fixing this for, and he said not to worry about the battery since it pull starts so easy. So the generator's running good, and uh, there you have it. Now, a couple words. If you have a generator like this or any kind of generator, set yourself an alarm on your phone, maybe like monthly or every six weeks, to take it out and start it and hook something up to it. I run that little electric heater. It put a little bit of a draw on it. You shouldn't run a generator without a draw for too long. Um, start it, run it for 15 minutes every month. That will help prevent uh, carburetor issues. Also, if you can get non 
ethanol gas in your area, that's a good thing. If you can get stable, add that to your gas, that's a good thing. And if it has a fuel shut off, shut the fuel off and run it until it dies, then the carburetor will be empty. Or like my buddy has, he has a dual fuel generator and he only runs it on propane. That's really nice because the propane doesn't cause carburetor issues. Because inevitably when you need your generator, that'll be the time you find out that you have an issue like this. But they're fairly easy to work on. Like I said, I never worked on one of these Hondas before. Um, I had to do a little work on my Predator, very similar. It just has plastic panels instead of metal. But then again, it's about 20 pounds lighter. It puts out a little bit more um, amps or watts or whatever that is. <laughs> I don't even know, what do they read them at? 3,500 3, watts. But uh, take care of your equipment and your equipment will take care of you. But if you, if you forget, now you know how to work on it. All right, if you're liking my content, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.